Hey, good morning, everybody. How are you? This is Freddie Ewan, two-time GM of the year, 2022 Pan Am Cup champion, reigning regular season champion. The final episode of the year, we're going to get the commissioner on. We are going to give out the big award, the GM of the year award. We are going to find out today. Just to let everyone know, although this is the last episode of the year, we're going to have a number of 12 for 12 specials on different teams. Um, me and Mr. McCluskey are going to put that together. We're going to get some new graphics, the whole nine yards, get the histories from every team. Our first um, 12 for 12 special is going to be entitled 777, and it's about the history of the rock throwers. We're going to try to get the rock throwers on for that. Probably won't be available for a comment. Worried that the camera puts on 10 extra pounds. Don't worry about it. Hopefully we'll get him on. That's going to be our first special. But right now we're going to get the commissioner on. We're going to talk about a lot of things. The GM of the year award is the most important, but we're also going to talk about a couple rules that kind of went on that people were a little bit iffy with this year, and we're going to get his take on it. So um, that's it. I'm going to invite this guy on right now, Mr. Michelli, and get to work. This should be a fun one. All right, so just uh, I'm looking to see. I don't think I have the um, – I think I might have deleted it from my email, the different awards and whatnot. But I think the only award that anyone really cares about is the GM of the Year Award, which I am um, about 99.9% .9 sure that I will not be receiving. It's kind of like uh, Michael Jordan in the 90s. You know, Jordan um, should have won the MVP every year. But he didn't. They had to give it to Barkley one year. They had to give it to Carl Malone one year. So that's that's kind of how the GM of the year award works a little bit. You know, there's always one league superstar and then you got to give, you know, you got to give it out to, you know, guys who had a good season. My vote did not change. I voted for Neil. So we got the commissioner on right now. Ready. Hey, how are you? Commissioner. Good, Good, Good. to see you. You got, an, you got an exciting weekend ahead of you, huh? Why is that, buddy? I you don't know. You lose? have uh, poker going on tonight. You know, I am a uh I am a, a died hard commander fan this weekend, actually. Go commander. Yeah, you want us to beat the cowboys. Absolutely. They beat the Cowboys. We get the uh we get the two and we beat the Giants, which is still a big if. We get the uh two seed and the Cowboys end up with the five seed. So yeah, I'm a big yeah. commanders fan. Unfortunately, uh I like our position with the number two pick right now. Possibly I heard going to number one, depending on if uh what shakes out, and that would be something. I but. think well. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, it's like I, I think that it's going to be interesting because I think that Chicago is going to I, I really think that they're going to keep fields for a year. Um, They're going to give them another shot before, you know, totally resetting and drafting another quarterback. So and I, I do think that Washington will have the pick of the litter. I, and hopefully, you know, I guess they'll probably pick Williams. That's where I would lean. I, I you know, I'd have to wait for the summer and see what uh, everybody thinks. I'm not a big college football watcher, so I, I don't know. Williams is a, um, you know, he didn't have a great year this year, but he was, uh, you know, he won the Heisman last year, super accurate, run on his feet. He's like a, um, he's like a Jalen Hurts type, type player. Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson type player. He's, you know, he injury, injury free, as we've known with uh, RG3, which is drafted before, um, you know, as long as he stays healthy, he should be a great player. Should be. I got some breaking news for you, Freddie. I'm going to break on your show. Uh, the winter board meeting has been postponed uh, one week. Uh, James let us know that the NCAA championship game is Monday night, and uh, he has a vested interest in Michigan playing. So <laughs> we're going to uh, we're going to move that back. Uh, well, you no really don't, you really don't follow college football, huh? <laughs> So right. anyway, I'm looking 
I'm looking for the email with all the um, and and I can't find it. So you know, I think that we should just go from the top. You know, we we'll we'll talk about you know some rule changes and everything last. But you know, let's go from the top and go over the awards. If you want to just um, you know, sure. we'll do the G GM of the GM last. We'll we'll do the GM last. But if you want to just go on and uh, tell tally up the votes, tell tell them what they are. Let's go. All right, so uh, let's start with the obvious one. The MVP of the year was a unanimous uh, Christian McCaffrey uh, swept that. All the uh, the GMs voted uh, for that. Uh, the rookie of the year, uh, kind of, I thought it would be tighter than it was, but Puka Nakua ran away with it. I think he just uh, got so far ahead at the beginning of the year that uh, that name kind of stuck in everybody's mind. But there were some very good uh, – rookies this year across the board tight ends wide receivers running backs it was something even quarterbacks uh but uh but it'll be the quarterbacks need some time to shake out to see who's you know, going to be the best the one thing about puka too is you know just from a fantasy football aspect you know and i i picked him up in a couple of leagues which i did you know and ended up you know winning one league with him but he's um you know no one thought you know, it's like, I, I mean, I think that everyone else was pretty much drafted. Gibbs was drafted. Robinson was drafted. Laporta was drafted, you know. Uh, but, you know, Stroud was probably drafted in most leagues. But, you know, nobody drafted Puka. So whoever got him off the waiver wire, um, you know, hit pay dirt. Very much so. Other than a keeper league or a dynasty league, he was undrafted in most uh, redrafts. You're right. Next, uh, Freddie, uh, bust of the year. Uh, this one could have taken a, a turn if you really included uh, injuries. I think uh, Nick Chubb would have been the bust of the year if you really uh, included injuries straight off the bat. Um, but the award went to Eckler, which is not far off. Uh, he was drafted – or actually he was uh, – uh, purchased very high in our league. I think he was the highest player purchased and just, you know, I, maybe he finished his uh, RB 12, which, you know, any other RB would have been just fine, but. Uh, I don't for, even know. If, I don't even don't know even, if he took that high. You don't even think he finished that high. Yeah. I mean, he, he was hurt for a good part. And when, I mean, he came back, you know, it's like, and, and you, you know, I talked to Brian about this on the show. It's like, you know, you got to start them. You almost have, you know, it's like you can't, yeah. you know, as much, you have to start them almost because, you know, of who he is and, and his history. But, you know, the last couple of games also, you know, I'm sure he wasn't on a whole lot of um, rosters in the championship game. But, you know, Brian had all the cap room. And, you know, from what he did with CMC, he got the opposite of Eckler almost. But I agree with that. Eckler was a big bust this year. He, it was close. I can tell you that Cam Akers was another one that was uh, voted a lot. Uh, the other votes went to uh, Damian Pierce and uh, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes is an interesting one because he still is Patrick Mahomes. You know, you're still going to have to put some a lot of equity to get him for next year. Um, but it'll be. I don't think anybody's running away from Patrick Mahomes. Now, if, if you're going to consider running away from Eckler next year, that'll be a tough uh, decision. But uh, that's probably – Eckler's probably not going to be a first or second round type of pick. No, I mean, he had two games, weeks eight and weeks nine, where he put – actually, weeks eight through ten, he put up 20 points for each one. You know, he put up 18, but besides that, it was like – you know, the first game he had 27, but all be in between it was like five points, seven points, three points, you know, really just nothing from him. And just circling back, Eckler was uh, 23rd average running back. So I was way off on my assessment of that. All five right, rushing touchdowns, one steaming touchdown. Quarterback of the year, right, he didn't get in the end zone. Quarterback of the year went to Lamar Jackson. Uh, quite a few votes for different players, but Lamar just solid and really down to the, the end of the year, he was very strong. Lamar Jackson, you know, looking at his uh, his fantasy points, the first game he put up 8.5 fantasy points. He had one game versus Arizona where he had 14, but he hit, 
I mean, he finished his last game with 46. He was over 20 almost <laughs> every single time. Yeah, he alone yeah. kept uh, Brian within four points, unbelievably within four points. And and you noted on your last po- uh, vo- vlog that uh, if he had just started any one of the other defenses that he had rostered the final week, he would have won. Uh, you know, that's just uh, yeah, a tough and, one. Yeah, and he was I, – I've done that before, and I know that he's probably kicking himself because it's like, you know, he had one defense in that he took out. He took. He had the Jets defense that gave that would have given him the win. He took that one out. He started Houston, took that one out, and I think whoever he started the final one, I think it was oh Vegas. Yeah, he started Vegas the final one and just gave him two points. Yep, that was killer. Yeah. The other quarterbacks, if you want to take a guess on some of the other quarterbacks voted on, I mean uh, Jalen Hurts has to be up there. Hurts got uh, no votes. No votes. Wow. Um. How about Purdy? Purdy got two votes. Love got two votes. Uh, and uh, Stroud and Prescott got each got a vote. Probably because we got so many Eagles haters in the leagues. Hurts didn't get um, any votes. Yeah, so <laughs> that might. Uh... <laughs> All right. Uh, best waiver wire pickup. Uh, that went easily to Puka Nakua. A oh, couple Puka. of votes for Kyron Williams because he was just so strong at the end of the year. But Puka was. Uh, really the pickup of the year and once again you know kudos kudos to brian you know both of those guys on his team kyron williams and puka they're both going to be keepers um probably so brian's going to have an opportunity next year to use them as well i'm sure worst waiver wire pickup ended up going to jake ferguson just but i think unfortunately that was just zach spending the the his last of his money uh it wasn't necessarily that he wanted him for $72, but it was just a matter of that. That was the timing of it. Uh, Amari uh, DiMaccario got two votes. Josh Palmer got two votes. Uh, so those were some. Yeah, that was, uh, I I thought, I, I spent almost all my money left on uh, DiCario. I thought once Connor went down, I mean, I think he had a good game. In Once Connor went down, I think Connor went down early in the game and he came in and he, he scored yes. a touchdown and had a hundred yards and, and then just didn't do didn't do shit after that. But you know, I mean, I I I even though Zach spent that money, you know, what are what are you doing with seventy two dollars to begin with? You know, it's like at the end of the year, yeah, yeah. You look at these weight, you know, you look at these guys who 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 finished in the top four, and they almost have no waiver money, and you know, that's one of the reasons. Yeah, it's a good point. Actually, that makes it one of the worst waiver wire pickups, just because he had so much money at the end of the year. That's true. Yeah. We had a special category come in late, rule break of the year. Uh, there was two nominations, double trades to avoid the escrow and the buyback player rule. And the buyback player rule won uh, for rule break of the year. Well, <laughs> well, did, you know, before we before we talk about the GM of the year, that's probably a good thing to hop into is, um, you know, I, I teed I, that one up for you, Freddie. You're welcome. I, <laughs> I had looked at, you know, we'll talk about this one first is I, I you know, I, I was not offered any buyback or I didn't even know what it was or or what it had meant. And, uh, you know, not going to bring up names on uh, who started that. And I think I'm not sure if he was the only one who made the trades with with other teams. But, you know, it, it looks a lot to me like collusion, like if we were playing in a uh, non salary cap league and. I was to talk to, you know, another GM and say, hey, let me, I'll trade you Jordan Addison for Justin Jefferson. Um, But at the end of the year, you know, I'll trade you Justin Jefferson back for Garrett Wilson, something like that. So I don't know. Yeah, on the face of it, it does sound, uh, you know, a little sketchy. Uh, I was able to talk to anybody that was involved in something like that. They gave, and to to hear them out before I, I, agreed to the trade or uh, canceled the trade, which I'm really against uh, canceling trades, voiding trades, you know, but I reached out to them and said, listen, this is not look right. Give me, give me a sense of what's going on. All right. It, it reassured me that it's not collusion. It reassured me that uh, it definitely reassured me that we need to work on it this uh, off season. And we'll, uh, you know, we'll address that issue. Uh, Freddie, I'm not going to say anything positive about it that you you know 
I don't like the idea of it and it'll be addressed. But I did reach out to the teams on my, you know, to make sure what was going on at during the middle of the season. I didn't want to like make, you know, sweeping rule changes that would allow, you know, these guys worked on this trade and, and it was something that they agreed on. They're both men. They're both, you know, adults that make the decision when they make the decision nobody was uh cheated or anything like that and i did not feel it was collusion at the time so i made the decision at the time you may not like the decision i didn't even like the decision but i'm really against flat out voiding trades just on the face of it your thoughts so is is, is that that are those trades so my thoughts are my thoughts are you know it, it if those trades are set in stone you know, and I think it was like an option to buy back players or not. You know, the one thing about that is, you know, just for for example, if I had I, I had, you know, traded with you to get C.D. Lamb earlier in the year and I ended up trading C.D. Lamb away. So basically, since, you know, if I made some kind of buyback decision with you to, you know, you'd have an opportunity to buy back C.D. Lamb, basically that would keep me strapped into him and I wouldn't be able to trade him. Because yeah, that was a that was a point Neil made. He was said he was taking a risk, and I said, you know, it, on the face of it, it didn't look like it because he could just trade him away at the end of the year. But it in the end, uh, Taylor did get hurt, and he's stuck with him. So Devinder has right of first refusal on a trade. So if Neil wants to trade him, he has to trade him to Devinder, and Devinder can uh, say no, you can't trade him. You have to, you know. Well, I guess you could say you can't – he doesn't want the trade, so then Neil can, has the option to trade him away to anybody else. But, you know, Taylor got hurt. He did come back at the end of the year, but there is some risk there uh, for his future playing. So that was, many, you know – How many of these buy, How many of these buyback trades were made? Do-do-do, uh, do-do-do, one, two, I'm looking, three. Were they made all by the same GM? No. No? multiple GMs and the two were very late in the, uh, in the process for, you know, not, not a lot. I guess, I mean, it's, it's right. It's a league. Uh, it's in the league uh, issues. Uh, Champ trades Olave to Zach for $19 and Gabe Davis option to buy back Olave for $8. Champ trades Kincaid to Zach for 16 and Pitts uh, option to buy back Kincaid for seven. So, you know, if if Zach, if Champ on the face of it, I'd say Olave for eight. You know, that might not be a bad Kincaid. I don't know, but Champ has a hard on for Kincaid, so he might be spending a little extra money there. Now, so. my my issue and the reason that I didn't do a, a trade like that is because you know I I I I didn't feel like it was in the realm of the rules. I, you know, and it, and you know A and B. You know, I I you know I I'm trying to improve my team constantly. If if I need to use one of those players, you know, during the season to make a trade to get somebody else, you know, I, it's almost like I can't make that trade because I got to, you know, sell them back. At, and, and what point do you sell them back at the end of the season? Is that, you know, so it does, I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I, I don't think, I don't think it should be, you know, I, I, I think that should be, you know, what, whatever you want to do with those current trades, you know, and, you know, I'm I'm always for, you know, more complexity to trades, but I still think it's just it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Yep. And then the other one is uh, duh, duh, duh. sorry. The double trades to avoid paying the amount, the twenty dollars. To avoid Again. paying the amount. So I so I had uh traded with you at the beginning, I think it was probably the first trade, and you traded C D Lamb. And, um, you know, of course, you pay an escrow amount when you trade an offer amount. If if I had come up to you when we made that trade and I said, hey, let's make two trades so I don't have to give you, the commissioner, any money. What, what would your response have been to that? It, uh, it has happened in prior years, uh, Freddie, just so you know that this was not the first time somebody had done that. Uh, I think it just it took a couple of years for teams to to pull you know, pull it aside and say, hey, this this is one way to to make it work. And it's bad when it's egregious. If you're paying like 
19 for like, you know, Cam Akers or something like that, who's who's on injured reserve. And you're paying 19 for CD Lamb to for a total of, you know, whatever it is, you know, 38. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you're like, come on, 19 for Cam Akers or something like that. But uh, it was, you know, a way for teams to to look to get around that. And it just was taken advantage of throughout the year. And I didn't like it. Uh, again, it wasn't something that is against the rules. Uh, you know, they just make trades. Freddie, I'm not going to argue with you on this. It's something we're going to look at and it'll be handled and changed. So this was the first year it was done uh, numerous times uh, to avoid it. And you and I were the only ones that made the trade and you and I were the only ones that paid that amount. So what can I say? So I, you know, I paid the full uh, 150 uh, the week after we made the trade. There was nothing, you know, I didn't have any hard feelings that other teams didn't. You know, it was annoying, but <laughs> what can I say? Well, you know, I mean, you know, once I started, I didn't even know, you know, it's like I knew there was a big, you know, ar argument last year, which, you know, I thought that, you know, a, a GM who's no longer with us made a made a big deal out of it and didn't really know the whole complexity just because he likes to argue. But, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, the, it, it kind of worked out this year where, you know, we had a player, we had a GM back out. And with a really crappy team and, you know, you needed to find a, you know, substitute GM and that GM basically got a free roll. Didn't have to pay anything for this league. So, you know, how much are, how much are the leagues do, sir? Is it 200 or 250? 200. No, I, I know where you're, where you're going with this, this coming year, any of those teams that made those cap trades, they can just walk out and they didn't pay anything for next year. And that was the sole reason that we put that rule in. It's a common rule in keeper and dynasty leagues. It needs to be adhered to for the uh, safety of the league going forward. It will be addressed most likely in something similar to just a one for one. You pay the amount that you trade there. We, we threw in a, a, uh, just a random $20 minimum that probably will go away and it'll just be maybe, you know, right now we have a five X. So if you make a $10 trade, you have to put 50 in, you know, up to the next year's dues. It'll get handled, Freddie. Uh, it's unfortunate that it was t uh, overused this year uh, to teams advantages. And I hope nobody leaves the league, you know, made those trades knowing full well, they were going to leave the league. That would be, that would be even worse. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, I mean, things do, you know, things do change. Everyone says, you know, oh, I'm going to be in this league forever. But, you know, that that necessarily doesn't happen sometimes. So, I mean, that was and and that was just my, you know, I, I've always paid the, you know, I've made trades and I've always paid the escrow amount. I didn't agree with, you know, paying an escrow amount that's over next year's thing. But it's, uh, you know, when I saw everyone else doing it. I, you know, I did the same thing, you know, and I should, I, you know, I should be due for the, for the full 200. I mean, that's, that's really how I feel. You know, I have, you know, if I was deciding to back out next year, you know, you got, you know, you got, let's just say you got $150 from me from that trade, but you're going to have to convince someone to pay 50 bucks and have, you know, after, after keepers have $70 in cap room, you know? So that's the, um, you know, the, and, and and for other teams, too, you know, I know there's some teams with $140, $150 you're, that haven't paid anything. So you're going to have to convince them to pay the full $200 and say, hey, by the way, you know, thanks for your fees. But, hey, you're only going to have $150 in cap room while some other guys are going to have $200, $250 because the decisions that the GM that is no longer with us made. That's very obvious. Uh, you're you're very right about that. And we will try to address it the best we can uh, with the uh, winter meeting. There is I mean, it's an aside, but it's a small amount. But if you remember the first year we paid 250 and we get ten dollars back each year, uh, we've received twenty dollars back. So there is thirty dollars there that can go to a team that that opts out uh, to their future owner. I mean, that that doesn't cover the full amount like we did with the vendor this year, but it does help the future team owner that comes in. At least he has a $30 uh, discount uh, going forward. You answered some tough questions this morning. I'm very proud of you.
Yeah, I didn't feel like I was going to uh, w- walk around it ever. You were going to keep on me, so I better just address it right off the bat. So the main event, the main event. The main event, the main event is Waffle House. Waffle House is coming up soon. Uh, you know, I do need to look at a schedule. I have some family things, uh, but we'll get to it. Uh, don't worry about it. Excellent, excellent. We, we're going to go live with the TPFFKAL show at Waffle House, but... <laughs> So I am going to assume I before you came on the show, I was kind of talking about like Michael Jordan in the 90s. You know, it's like Jordan was the MVP every year, but every year you had to kind of give it to Barkley one year or Malone one year, you know. So so I'm going to assume that I did not win my third straight GM of the year award. I, I even though I, I think I should have gathered some votes, I guarantee you I didn't even get one vote. <laughs> All right. So big surprise. No, it was an interesting uh, one owner did vote for himself and I had to go back and say, you can't do that. So that? you would have gotten one vote if you had voted for yourself. Right, Freddie? <laughs> no. That's true. Uh, so our GM of the 2023 season is Brian and Virginia Sea Dogs. Brian McCluskey and the Virginia Sea Dogs. Congratulations, Brian. Very tight vote. Jimmy had three votes. Brian had four votes. Uh, Neil had one vote. And uh, drum roll, please. Freddie had one vote. Wow. So someone did vote for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Was it you? It was me. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Beautiful. (laughs) See, there's there's someone who knows there's someone who knows who an MVP is. (laughs) <laughs> yeah in a keeper league to start with that little amount of cap because i was not far behind you i was behind you i had more cap than you but i knew how difficult it was to uh to work the uh the draft and uh, congrats to you to make the playoffs that was strong it was a uh yeah it was a it was a good year hopefully it's gonna be uh it's gonna run out at some point hopefully it won't be next year so um excellent rich this was awesome congratulations to brian this will be the uh, this is the official last show of the year, but we're going to do a couple twelve for twelve specials on different teams and uh, <laughs> their history and whatnot. I might have to rely on you. Can you you can get the history off of Yahoo? So I might need to rely on you to get some history lessons on some things. But we're going to start off our first twelve for twelve special. is going to be called seven seven seven, and it's going to be the history <laughs> talk So <laughs> good luck getting him on the show. That'll be uh, a major coup. All right, Freddie, enjoy your weekend. We'll see you Excellent. later tonight. I'll see you later, Rick. Thanks a lot.